Hello, this is Justin with LitTube, here with another face-to-face -face episode. Now, in my introductory episode, I told you all that I was going to be talking quite a bit about stocks and the stock market, other types of investments. As it turns out, uh, that's probably not the case. This may be one of the only videos I do uh, on stocks. And the reason is, this is just simply not a great time to be buying stocks right now. Uh, in fact, my advice, more than anything else, would be to sell your positions. And this is why. I've included in the description uh, for this video a link to another video uh, with a famous economist, James Dale Davidson. And he's basically giving you a bunch of reasons why you should be exiting the stock market right now and not entering positions uh, in companies. Now... Keep in mind, this economist has accurately predicted many crashes and uh, recessions that have happened in recent years. Uh, he predicted ahead of time what happened in 2008-2009 with the real estate bubble, the housing crisis, probably best summed up by the movie The Big Short, uh, where Christian Bale plays Michael J. Burry. Um, I'm sure some of you have watched that movie. Uh, well, James Dill Davidson also predicted ahead of time that that crash would happen and several others. Uh, I trust his opinion here, and I'm someone that has studied economics uh, while I went to college, so I have a basic understanding of the things he's talking about in, in the video. And uh, I want you guys to really check out that video because, I mean, it is about 45, 50 minutes long, uh, but I think within the first 30 or so minutes of it, uh, you would really get a great picture of what's going on. I'm going to sum it up for you uh, as best I can for those of you that don't bother watching the video. But basically, there's a bunch of cracks in our economy right now. Um, and really, the, the debt approaching $20 trillion is just one of the cracks. There's actually many more. Um, some other examples include uh, the student uh, debt bubble, uh, the fact that baby boomers are retiring, and that's going to create a void uh, of people uh, exiting the workforce and no longer that will further reduce productivity, and they're basically going to be saving their money and not contributing much to the economy. So that's another thing that's going to hurt. Uh, also, the real estate market recovered after the crash of 2008 and 2009, but there isn't much of a basis for the recovery. And what I mean by that is, and it, you'll see this in the video if you watch it, um, uh, James Dale Davidson brings up a chart uh, that shows the home ownership rates right now are actually the lowest they've been in decades. Uh, so you have low home ownership rates, yet a high real estate market. It's another one of those um, correlations that doesn't really make sense. Uh, and this is a common theme, you know. That, and we also look at the stock market itself. Uh, right now, the S&P 500 is trading at a price earnings ratio around 25 or 26, somewhere in that range. The average range is closer to 16. Uh, so that just shows you how overvalued the market is. And honestly, the reason it's overvalued and that the crash hasn't happened yet is because the Federal Reserve is basically making interest rates close to zero, which makes it so people don't really want to invest their money in a savings account or a CD or uh, any other type of investment like that that's very safe and just provides you a, per a small percentage return because you're basically getting less than 1% on your investment doing that. So that's definitely not even keeping up with inflation to do that. So the result is everyone's pouring their money into stocks, uh, mostly dividend paying stocks because that, you know, gives you a percentage in cash payouts uh, as opposed to just working with a capital appreciation. A lot of people like the dividend investing strategy and I actually like it, um, especially if I'm, you know, having a retirement account set up. I do like the dividend growth strategy, but Again, it's not the time to be doing it because everything is so overvalued right now. So my advice to sum this up 
is basically sell your positions in the stock market and do nothing. Wait for the crash to happen or at least for a significant correction to happen because the crash might not happen right away. Uh, but I do believe we'll see a correction probably sometime after the presidential election happens, to be honest with you. But if not, then sometime early in 2017, we could see it. Uh, Donald Trump getting elected would be an insta crash. I mean, he's so unpredictable. He's a wild card. Wall Street hates that. Uh, so if he becomes the president, you're instantly going to see a stock market crash. Uh, think about what happened with Brexit. Uh, you know, everyone expected a remain vote for England. Uh, but instead, what happened was uh, they voted to leave the EU. And that caused a drop in the stock market. Uh, it was a pretty significant drop for a couple days and the market kind of rebounded. Uh, it's going to be much more serious of a drop if Donald Trump gets elected. If Hillary Clinton gets elected, I, I believe things are going to be status quo for a while. But again, because the stock market is so inflated right now, it's just a matter of time. We, we don't know exactly when uh, it's all going to go down. Uh, in fact, James Dale Davidson in his video predicted um, the crash to happen about six months to a year from when he made the video. He made the video over a year ago. So he, he's early. He, uh, per, he was early on that prediction, um, but I still believe that he's right uh, and that it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. If you watch the big short, uh, you saw that Dr. Michael Burry, uh, you know, he was going through information and was like, wow, you know, there's going to be a crash because of what's going on with these mortgages. The banks are giving out mortgages to people that shouldn't have them. Uh, and basically, he bet huge against the housing market, which everyone thought at the time was a stupid idea. And, you know, for a while, his uh, hedge fund that he was managing, since he did all these credit swaps to short the housing market, uh, he was actually, his, his portfolio was losing a lot um, because, you know, f the crash didn't actually happen for another like year. So he was way too early on his prediction, but in the end, he still made huge amounts of money because once it did, uh, the housing market did crash, then he was able to s sell in those uh, credit swaps and make a bunch of money for his investors. So basically, um, I, I think you should all watch the video because it's going to explain in much greater detail than I am what's going to happen and why. But I just wanted to let you know, uh, you know, if you want to, listen to what I have to say, my advice would be seriously consider selling the stocks that you have right now, especially the high beta stocks, meaning stocks that are highly correlated with what the market's doing. I mean, if you're holding utilities right now or or stocks that have like a, a, a zero or negative beta or a very low beta score, you don't have to worry about selling them. But things that are correlated with the market, you want to get out of your portfolio right now. Because while we may see those stocks go up in the short term, uh, in the intermediate to long term, you're going to see a correction or a crash. So you need to get out while you still can. Now, if you want to be one of those people that tries to make money off of a crash, then what you should probably be doing is, um, which I believe would be a safer method than just shorting the stock market, uh, would be to buy uh, gold and silver mining stocks. That would be my advice if you want to try to make moves while this is all going down. But the safest route is to sell your positions, wait for the crash, and then buy up at the lower valuations. Uh, you know, this is standard advice that you'd get. You know, buy low and sell high. That's what you're told to do when it comes to the markets. Um, but right now the market is so high, it's way overvalued, and you need to just step back and wonder when are we going to be able to invest money again and make a profit. Because right now you're playing with fire if you open new positions. Anything other than the only if you're going to open new positions right now, it has to be something that's going to go up when the market goes down. So I would definitely give gold and silver miner stocks a look or ETFs if you don't want to risk. Uh, if you want to be a little more diversified, ETFs are a way to basically bundle a bunch of stocks together. Um, it's kind of like a mutual funding, but it trades like a stock. So I would look into gold and silver miner ETFs. I would look into 
just exiting your positions and waiting for the drop to happen. Um, or another alternative, if you want to be that person that buys physical uh, precious metals, you want to go out and buy platinum and silver and gold, I don't recommend that because whenever you go out and buy precious metals from like a jeweler or wherever, uh, you're paying at a premium. It's also harder to, to sell that stuff, but in the event of a true economic collapse, it would be good to have precious metals on hand, but I would go the route of gold and silver miner stocks. I think there's more upside there. It's, it's more liquid. That's what I would go with. Um, but all this to say, you know, please watch the video in the description. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Comment below. Uh, and if you have any disagreements with my assessment, please let me know. I want to I want to continue my research here. If I'm if you have a good point that says I'm wrong, uh, I would definitely look into that. But from everything I've researched from my background in business and economics, I believe you're playing with fire if you're going to keep buying stocks right now. I'm, I myself am looking to exit most of my positions and either buy the gold and silver miner ETFs or just do nothing. So that's where I'm at. And I would appreciate some comments letting me know what you think. And that's my episode of Face to Face for today. I'll catch you next week.